What's up, my people? It's your girl, Adiola. Have you all grabbed your copy of that movie titled Nigerian Politics? Yes, it keeps getting better. I'm telling you. Part one was when Nigeria postponed its elections and went to the elections after four years of preparation. But of course, you know, we must have part two, <laughs> part three sometimes. I mean, unless it's not a Nigerian movie. I'm already watching part two, Yari. That is well, less than three weeks to the presidential elections. A justice at the Federal High Court in Abuja ordered the Electoral Commission, INEC, to register a new political party. Jay! What will you not see in Nigeria? By the way, have you guys heard the cocoa of the matter? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Don't tell anybody that you had this from me, yeah? That this new party is being sponsored by the ruling party, PDP. PDP is People's Democratic Party. And then the new party, YDP is Young Democratic Party. Look at that similarity. They can't even come up. Jay! You know, a punch reporter said that he saw one of those YDP guys at the headquarters of the ruling party, PDP. He said, ah, oh God, now what do you do here now? That one said, ah, <laughs> you know, you must make my comments confidential and sure you understand, but I'm here to give PDP feedback about the success of the court session. This is what punch said. In a confidential discussion with our correspondent, he said he had come to brief the party, that is PDP, on the success of their legal work, which made the court to order that the new party be registered. Hey! So it was PDP that did the legal work. Yay! No wonder, no wonder. I said, but, but why now? Why now? When election is like two weeks. You know the presidential nomination form alone for this party is 50 million naira each. Who is sponsoring them? Eh? By the way, they said that the nomination form is free for women no, in their party. Eh? That you only have to pay 100,000 naira. I was so happy. Finally, here comes my chance of becoming Nigeria's first lady. Anyway, anyway, the important thing for you guys to know today is that their presidential primaries will be held on March 26th and 27th. The day before and the day before before the presidential elections. Jay, you see the irony of the matter. And what do you think will happen after their primary elections? They'll probably say, well, 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 you know, we just elected our candidate. I Inek, I sure you understand. Now give us time for him to campaign. Eh? No, so you had them giving Inek two options now. Inek, however, has two options. You should reprint its ballot papers and include our dear party so as to accommodate our candidates. Second option is, if INEC does not have the required logistics, then INEC ought to, within the constitutional provision, further reschedule the general elections so as to accommodate our party. Ah! Oh my father and my god who are these people who are these guys by the way who are they where have they been all this while i have never heard of any of them have they been speaking out about the situation of nigeria before now or they just suddenly became politicians eh? what is their manifesto they're going to print new ballot papers Jay. so what i don't understand is why mr president has been quiet about this issue eh? why has the presidency not said anything about this now at least say something say something excuse me Jay my people eh? hello and hey, what is it now didn't i tell you don't call me when i'm on air eh? 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 what excuse me hey whoa! just like that eh? ah we'll talk later call me after the service my people i just got a call calling the world look it up apparently the court came out and said that they did not order INEC to include this new party on the ballot paper hey my dad, say you see, say you see. Uh, so who is lying? Uh? What is going on actually? I'm really, really confused right now. If the court did not order INEC to include them on the ballot, but why say INEC should register them? Why are you trying to cause this confusion now? Uh? All I know is Nigerians need to know that there is a deliberate effort to stall this coming election. And you know, the person responsible is so good in playing cluelessness. <laughs> now, what baffles me is that when some of us are speaking out about these things, instead of some Nigerians to wake up and say, wait a minute, this thing looks like a duck, yo, and it swims like a duck, and then it walks like a duck, it must be a duck, yo. Instead of that, they decided to attack the messengers. Yay! Number one, number one, somebody postponed elections. A week to the election, you did not wake up. And then he gave seven billion no pastors to preach against some candidates you still did not wake up and then he paid AIT 10 billion naira 10 billion to run propaganda documentaries against some people oh by the way I heard that the next uh, documentary 
created by AIT would focus on Osimbajo and how bad he is. The good thing, by the way, is that Osimbajo has secured a court order preventing them from airing that documentary. Not only that, this same person he say he doesn't want the use of card reader in this coming election. You know, card reader that will make sure that your fingerprint is the same as the one on the PVC that will validate your fingerprint when you thump your hand, like the first lady has been telling us to thump our hands. Wait till you will see in a PDP. I'm on so that day you press your hand. See, you understand? Eh? This same person he say he doesn't want the use of a card reader. And people are not waking up. By the way, I heard that at least a million PVCs have been cloned. <laughs> and you know that if they don't use the card reader, there's no way to validate these PVCs. People are still not waking up. Now, a new party, two and a half weeks to the elections. Why would Nigerians wake up? Please, please, forget about, oh, he's from where I'm from, or he's a Christian, or whatever. They are playing games with us they are playing games with us and so many of us are helping them to succeed in holding on to power when clearly they are not concerned about the interest of the common people chai hey ah uh, hello hey, hello hey, no 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 you uh -huh. you think i cannot hear you hey look at these people nigerians this is how they start hey, baby, big mouth everything you are saying about me i can hear you are asking me who is the guy that i'm talking about you do i have to tell you everything do i look like i gossip if you want to know who the guy is put two and two together ah nigerians i'm very tired of them speaking of two and two by the way did you guys hear that obana kuro is now a federal minister Despite being involved in the rigging of Ekitigate, you know, the man is now a minister appointed by my press. Hey, wait a minute. Jono, oh, let me look here in case it's what Mr. Jono, you want me to sing for you? Jono, Jono, son, Jono, Jono, son. Ah, how can you do this? How can you do me like that? Jono, Jono, son, Jono. They should be interrogating him and uh, that's one. What is his name? Fire say I'm coming back to him, you know, he's only his special case. How can you make him a minister? A federal minister? Is that the payment for rigging the elections for your candidates in the kitty? Eh? You know why? Why? But but why? Why are you destroying everything that you and I have worked very hard to build? This is very, very bad publicity for you, Jono. I'm very bad, eh? You are not even hiding it anymore. You know how desperately I want you to win this election. By the way, by the way, Mr. Jonathan. Is it true that you also said that the Ekiti tape, which is the evidence that the election was rigged in Ekiti, is it true that you said that it cannot be authenticated until the man that recorded it shows his face in Nigeria? Hey! Call it over. Exactly what did Mr. President say? If someone comes up with a spurious allegation that has no substance and the person disappears, of course, what do you want me to do? Definitely, any time that we get him, he will have to come and substantiate his allegations. You know, because there is a lot of false stories being circulated and it is very sad, very, very sad. And then somebody asked Mr. President, how did you know that the tip was fabricated? Have you listened to it? This is what Mr. President said. I have not watched the video. Chai! You didn't watch the video, Mayoga, and you were, ah, bad. You know, you know how we are now. I don't like to correct you, but next time, at least watch the video before you decide it was fabricated, eh? You know, do well, you know, do well. By the way, it's not a video, it's an audio tip. I said it was a fabrication because you see, people now, especially with the social media, we could be here and discuss issues, and somebody will hack some of our voices and then create a story that never happened. This is my president! Ay, 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 ay. By the way, by the way, I'm starting to feel sorry for that man. Eh? I your fire say, don't you guys feel sorry for him? Hey, you know, it's starting to become too obvious that he's been having sleepless nights. No, really, you have to pity him. The man is too afraid of worry. I don't know why. Did you guys hear what he said this week? My mother at 74 will not be waking up like me now. My mother, when she wants to open her eyes, she will open it like this. A lot of people who are over 70 are now wearing pampas. <laughs> what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first of all, in an effort to insult Buhari, the man insulted Governor Jang who was sitting behind him. You know that Governor Jang is 70. They must vote for people. Sorry, sir. Is why I always tell you guys, big mouth, big mouth. It's not good. And then 
his statement backfired though. It backfired. Because you know he said that his mother is also above 70. And then when he said people above 70 are using diapers, people started circulating the picture of his mother. They are saying, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. So this woman is wearing papas. Yay! I said, my people, may our children never disgrace us, yo. I'm sure that someone would have called his mother and said, hey, yeah, fire us, hey, hey. Oh, my God, I am here. I'm on the grass, I am by. Ah, ah, ah. Your picture is circulating everywhere. People are saying that you wear pampas. Yeah. Just imagine giving your own mother an old woman hypertension. Fire yourself. Why now? Why? why? Why did you have to bring your mother into this case? And um, not to forget, eh, my yoga, Mr. Presido, you know, I'm starting to worry about you. Really, really worried. Because it looks like the prayers in Jerusalem is not enough. And then the prayer of a uh, Pastor Adeboye is also not enough. You also had prayers by Imams that came from Senegal and a lot of Muslim clerics have been praying for you. I guess it is not enough because now it is traditional rulers. Why don't you just forward your prayer request to me? Eh? Is it about this coming election? Why are you having hypertension? You don't need to worry about anything. I've been telling you, you are winning this election. Eh? When will you give yourself peace of mind? Eh? You are getting me worried the way you are running everywhere for prayers. Just leave everything in my hand i can represent you enlighten people about your transformation agenda so stop worrying yourself my yoga eh? ah, habba, habba, habba. and leadership newspaper ah, you must you say everything must you open your mouth bagada like that and Nigerians, they talk too much too much you guys know i don't know anything eh? guess what i'm just keeping it true if you are a journalist in this day and age, you better learn from me. <laughs> Get your karate on point. Get it on point. If you don't have your black belt, I've been telling you, let me hook you up. <laughs> I know people that know people that know people. Did you guys see that reporter that was robbed live on air? Now, the SABC News team was robbed at gunpoint during a live crossing this evening. William Voko is here with me right now. And we're going to look at the footage first and then we will be chatting to him. <laughs> Hey, we're being we're being marked. We're being marked. Chai! Yes, so, yes, they robbed the man and others that were behind the camera. Listen to this. These guys just came. In fact, I was confused because remember, as you stand there, I was the only one with the light on. The light was on me. So everybody else was uh, sort of, uh, you can't see the other people. Uh, so he was looking for the phone. So because I wasn't giving him the phone, then he calls the other one who has a gun to say, you know, Dula uh, Lenja or something like that, you know? Sure. Um, so at, at that point, like, you know, Sophie and them that scream, just give him the phone, you know. So I give him the phone and then, you know, they take, they took, I, I think about two or three phones, my phone, Sophie's phone, I can't remember who else's phone. Um, and, but also the laptop that we're using to like, you know, uh, do the crossing. Chai! South Africa. And South Africa, and I was just thinking about coming for my vacation. It's not good, now. Nah? Eh? People who are doing things like this, they need to know that they give their countries bad rapport. Uh -uh. I'm just so glad that they didn't harm any of them. But you know, I think I'll so come. I think I'll so come. I'll just make sure that my karate is on point. You know, like, Ooh. take me off the camera. Didn't you hear what happened? There's an accident here. Take me off the camera. <laughs> Moving on to the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kinshasa. Check this out. Rush hour traffic is slowly easing up along the intersection of Boulevard to Gronfal and Hilarious Avenue in Kinshasa. Thanks to the two new robot cops in town. They may not have real eyes, but new traffic policemen still spot Kinshasa's usual signature cop sunglasses. The robots are equipped with four cameras that allow them to record traffic flow. The information is then transmitted to a center where traffic infractions can be analyzed. The team behind the new robots are a group of Congolese engineers based at the Kinshasa Higher Institute of Applied Technique. They say this would help bring order on the roads and bring in revenue. The robot corresponds to international standards 
if a driver says that he is not going to respect the robot because it's just a machine, the robot is going to take that and there will be a ticket for him. Yes, so a traffic robot cop. What? That's exciting. You know, I noticed that people there have mixed reviews. Some people love it. Others are not like impressed. But I am impressed, man. As a motorcyclist, I'm very happy with the robot's work. Because when the traffic police control the cars here, there's still a lot of traffic. But since the robots arrived, we see truly that the commuters are respectful. The robot was not made to arrest offenders or act on accidents or other violations of the traffic code. Because if someone knocks someone else off the road the robot is not going to follow that up for real though that is not only innovative but they will be able to save money because apparently they spent a lot of money to manufacture the robots see that many other african countries are moving forward niger have you guys seen the light rail that they just launched in ethiopia Chai! You see what I'm saying? Eh? I said to myself, I said, ah, this train in Ethiopia, how much did this thing cost them now? I found out $475 million. See? Eh? And it's been overseen by the Ethiopian Railway Corporation. They did not contract it out. They are doing the thing themselves. How much is our own train construction project, my dear? Eh? Hey, $12 billion. $12 billion. What? Oh my God. And we give the contracts to Chinese people. Does that even make sense though? We borrowed the money from China and we gave the contract to Chinese people so they will make their money back from us plus interest. Hey! And look at what we have to show for it. 12 billion! Except for the air conditioned train in Lagos. Look at what they bought with 12 billion! 12 billion dollars! And on top of that, these people have the guts to tell us that as Nigerians, we cannot have new trains. Rails, rail system that have been moribund for 20 years, I mean, you know, have been comatose that have never ever worked. This admission has revitalized it. They have revitalized We Lagos see the pictures of the rails, sir. They look like locomotives from 1950 what does second hand third hand forget it from we are not america why can't we, we have are, brand new you trains? cannot have brand new trains because you know the economy cannot support that and besides that we are using why old, i thought we, we are, are the largest economy in africa why uh, uh, we are the largest you know we are the largest market we are the largest economy it does not mean that all the money is not going to be used to be grand to go and buy trains and coaches so where no, are look the money you know look going? you've got the money is the money is being spent on Nigeria and the Nigerian people. Thank you very much. God bless you. There is a God, Zoo. There is God in anything that we are doing. There is a God, Zoo. Congratulations to Ethiopia on their light rail. This is what we call light rail. It is a real light rail. This one is locomotive, not light rail, by the way. And also congratulations to the Republic of Congo for the Robocop. <laughs> it's doing a good job. And not only that, congratulations to Dr. Doyo Kupe. Yes, my brother, for letting us know that we don't deserve new trains because we are Nigerians. You guys know I don't know anything except the fact that they are able to buy brand new planes for Mr. President. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. They can get that from Mr. President but for the common people, Nigerians, this is what we get for 12 billion dollars. Oh my god, guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Before I leave today, I'd like to read some of your emails. And the very first one I will be reading is from Olu Olu. And he says, hi, Adeola. Let me appreciate the good job that you're doing. But the reason that I'm writing this piece is to passionately use your medium to please appease our friends on social media, specifically Facebook, to stop insulting people. <laughs> the platform is not for insulting people because of their views are different from yours. Just express your view and leave. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Eh? Some people have made enemies because of this election. You don't need that. I know a number of people that will come on my wall to abuse me every day whenever I post something. The fact that people state their opinion about this election doesn't mean you have to make them your enemies. Because guess what? The election will pass. Nigeria has over 170 million people. We've had a civil war, military dictatorship, intertribal skirmishes, and terrorist issues. In spite of that, we're together. And that says something. It says something good. My name is Onomo. I am from Akwaibom State. My name is Hawa Shehu. I am Nupe. My name is Tayo, and I'm Yoba. My name is Ngozi. 
I am from the Igbo part of the country. My best friend is Tokbe. She's Yoruba and a Muslim. My favorite food is from Calabar. My wife is a Jebu and I live in Ajawa Estate in Lagos. The truth is that on a good day, our differences don't matter. Think about it. We relate with people from different backgrounds, tribes and religious persuasions every day without thinking twice. In spite of the elections, we stand together. In spite of what anyone says, we stand together. One, One Nigeria. Nigeria. The next email is from Marcy Amuka. And this person said, Hi, Adiola. I need help with a young lady studying at the Tanson University in Maryland. She's done three years. She has some months to graduate. However, there's a change in events in the life of her parents. So she's facing a tough time financially as a foreign student, facing being sent home by the authorities because she cannot pay her final year fees. She has $4,000 out of 12000 needed, but because she couldn't come up with the rest of the money, she was not allowed in class. Right now, she's just waiting for a miracle to happen. Her name is Emily Ibiduni of the Department of Psychology. Please appeal to your viewers and the money can be paid directly to her university with her name as the reference. Thank you so much. Mercy Amuka. I know what it's like to be an international student. It's very hard. You don't get work permit and all that. So it's very, very hard to raise money. And especially now that dollar to Naira is like so ridiculous. I can only imagine uh, what it's like for her parents. So this lady is stranded. If someone watching me feels touch please 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 uh like the writer said you can pay directly to the school the least you can do is call the school ask if they have a student by the name emily ibidoni and ask about her tuition status and if you're able to help her out please that would be fabulous the next email is from Kayode Abiodun and he says, Hi Adiola, what an irony that a president advocating technology to fight corruption, but his party is rejecting technology to fight election rigging. Mm. <laughs> my name is Abiodun Kayode, living in Dubai. Thank you, my brother. We are confused too, my brother. We don't know what is going on. He's been advocating technology. Even Madame Peche said we are no longer in analog. We are now in digital. We are no more going to analog. We are moving to digital. We are already in digital. Do you have to play it? They know what I'm talking about. So we don't know why he doesn't want the card reader. <laughs> Thank you, Yari, my brother. Our next email is from Emiola Abiola, and this person says, Hi, Adiola. This is an open letter to Nigerian President Good Lord Jonathan. Dear sir, my name is Card Reader. I was born and brought up in Europe. I'm one of the numerous children of computer family. I attended School of Trust Technology, where I was awarded Professor of Transparency. I have worked in so many reputable nations, both in Asia, Africa, and Europe, to wipe away corruptions in elections. Sometimes ago, Professor Atahiru Jega came to request my service to come and help you sanitize the forthcoming election in your country. I honored the invitation because Professor Jega said you want to conduct an historic credible election in 2015. Sir, the election is approaching now, and you're saying you don't want me again? <laughs> Sir, what have I done wrong now? <laughs> Why do you hate me all of a sudden? Don't you want transparency again? You don't like credibility anymore? You hate me to the extent that you want to sack the garant of Professor Jega all because of me? Chai! Oh God, wait till I do you. <laughs> Please allow me to do my professional assignment. Thank you. Yours sincerely, card reader. Chai! Chai! Card reader! Nigerians! How can you not love Nigerians? Hey, look at that, eh? Nigeria, my brother. Thank you for writing, Ojari. So I also got a message from Mr. Yinka Yefele, the musician. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, what? I can't believe they're watching the show. Anyway, and he wanted me to let you guys know about a lady called Oluwa Sheum Oluwa Kemi Fadojo Dutimi, who is 33 years old, and she is in desperate need of a kidney transplant. And to do that, they're trying to raise 75 thousand pounds for this lady her brother who is 37 is willing to donate his kidney and this is the bank account where anybody can donate apparently he's had her in his studio so he knows her this is not a scam if anyone is able to help he has donated other people that he knows have donated as well he has an online radio show by the way and he had interviewed her he had her in his studio he said he couldn't help himself the day she came he was he was shocked to see how she had changed i mean look at the before picture and now look at the after picture. Would you believe that this is the same person? Yeah, I was so, so sad. So please, if anyone is able to help this lady, her name is Uluwakemi 
uh, Oluwa Sheun, Oluwa Kemi, Fado Jo Duti Me, and she's 33 years old. Please, please, if you can help her, please. Time is running out. This is real. This is not a scam. Uh, I actually spoke with Mr. Ifele on phone, so I know that this is for real. So please, if you are able to, please help her out. All right, guys, that's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adiola.kipneril at gmail.com. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.